a weekly um, discrete optimization uh, talks. Um, today, uh, I'm happy to uh, first introduce uh, Beste Basveche. Beste, sorry if I butchered that. No, 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 it's uh, great. <laughs> uh, Beste is, is currently a postdoc uh, in, uh, at the School of Industrial and Systems Engineering at Georgia Tech, where she also um, did her PhD. Um, uh, her research interests are, are broadly in uh, uh, stochastic optimization um, and applications in energy. Um, and for her work, she's received uh, multiple awards, uh, including uh, Georgia Tech's uh, ISOIE PhD Student Research Award, uh, and also the INFORMS 2018 ENRI Best Student Paper Award. Uh, and today she's going to present uh, uh, on a new paradigm in uh, stochastic uh, programming, which is called uh, adaptive uh, stochastic, uh, multi-stage stochastic optimization. So Bestie, please uh, take it. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction and invitation. It's great to be here. Uh, let me share my screen with you and please let me know if there's any issues. I should say, uh, I should say folks, if you have uh, questions, please feel free to type them in, uh, in the chat. You are on mute. Uh, and if we feel like uh, it's, a, it's a good question to interrupt with, uh, we'll unmute you or ask the question on your behalf. Uh, otherwise, feel free to write them in the chat box and then uh, best I can answer them uh, right after the talk. Go ahead. Uh, so thank you again for the introduction and let me start the talk. So uh, for this problems, motivation, in fact, it's uh, related with the optimiz optimizing multi-field problems under uncertainty as it's a challenging task. And if we think of the relevant literature in stochastic programming, we can think of two main areas, which are two-stage stochastic programming and multi-stage stochastic programming. Uh, in two-stage stochastic programming, it's a static approach where like, you need to commit a set of actions ahead of planning and you don't have a, have a chance to revise them throughout the planning horizon. And on the other hand, we have multi-stage stochastic programming where our, like, all decisions can be uh, changed throughout the planning horizon. So it's like a fully flexible adaptive approach. But in some settings, these approaches may become insufficient in uh, solving because uh, sometimes we might have some limitations, such as like some contractual settings and other things, which I will be uh, showing you shortly. Uh, so in this study, our goal is to develop a partially adaptive approach by uh, finding the best time to revise our decisions. So in particular, let's go over uh, one setting in generation capacity expansion planning. So in this uh, setting, the goal is to determine the capacity a capacity acquisition and capacity allocation decisions of different types of generation resources over a multi-period planning horizon. So in here, this like the first decisions are like say how much, like how many uh, generators that you need to buy and like kind of the secondary decision is like, uh, like, uh, like your production amounts based on your uh, purchase like capacity. And in this case, if we think about the primary decision, which are the capacity acquisition decisions, these decisions may need to be revised because we have some uncertainties in demand, in food prices and investment costs over like say five, 10 years planning horizons. And if we commit them ahead of the planning for this five, 10 years, then it might become too restrictive. So if we think of having two states, it might result in a restricted policy. But on the other hand, if we think of the multi-stage case, and in that case, these decisions may not be changed in each period. Uh, because we need to also make some commitments or we might have some contractual restrictions. Say you are making like a nuclear plant, plant or co coal plant, which uh, takes like more time and uh, costly compared to like renewable resources. But if you commit such an action, then uh, you, do not have a, you do not have choice to revise it in each period as you see changes in demand in full prices. So having, that, having such a flexible uh, solution is not suitable in such a case. Another example can be like in portfolio optimization uh, in which the goal is to determine whether to invest or not, then how much to invest over a multi-period planning horizon. And if we think about the investment decisions, which are kind of the primary ones, these decisions may need to be updated because of uncertainties in investment resources, prices and return amounts. So committing them ahead of planning might be restricted. But on the other hand, like similarly, like if you do, like if you change your portfolio each time, you might have some portfolio rebalancing actions, or sometimes you might have contracts so that like you are not allowed to change in fact. So it might be costly or sometimes not feasible depending on the problem setting. So in here we can observe that like, uh, so like although multi-stage stochastic programming seems like a good approach to capture all the underlying uncertainty, sometimes it might not give feasible solutions. 
and two states becomes restrictive. So which is why we are thinking about a different approach to handle such cases. And uh, to, to show this idea better, so like I will be using scenario trees to represent uncertainty in a multi-period setting. And these scenario trees helps us to also show like stochastic processes as finite stochastic processes. So in here, in fact, like, by, um, like for instance, if we can first think about the first figure, which is like the scenario tree itself. And in a scenario tree, just like some basic notation. So in fact, each node corresponds to a specific realization over time. And in fact, this path is like a scenario. Say like we are in like period four, then like this is like this path. So I guess you can see my cursor. So this is like kind of the first like scenario. This can be my second scenario and et cetera. And each node corresponds to a specific realization over time. And in multi-stage, this means that you can have decisions, like different decisions in each uh, node. So these are the decision structures. So like I would like to note that in fact, although these are decision structures, the underlying uncertainty is same for all the three cases. And uh, so like in multi-stage, it has uh, decisions for each node. But in two-stage, we are much more restrictive, meaning that like we have a single decision for like we combine like these nodes and we have single decision for the second period. And for third period, we have a single one and same for the fourth one. So it is a much restrictive setting. And the one that we propose uh, in this one, we start as if a static policy uh, and then uh, so like at some revision point, we see the uh, like what, what is the current uh, level of uncertainty. And then we revise the decisions for the remainder of the planning horizon. So it's like a partially adaptive stochastic programming approach by determining the best revision time for our decisions. But here the critical question becomes how to determine that revision point. And if we think about the relevant literature in this area, we can think of two main lines of research. So the first one is the intermediate approach between two-stage and multi-stage stochastic programming. But these approaches are mainly for solving the multi-stage. So they do not necessarily uh, have, like, they are not tailored for a specific uh, problem settings, like such as these uh, partially flexible settings, but they are rather for solving the multi-stage stochastic program as like uh, by using some like methods such as like this shrinking horizon strategy is one way. Also, there are some other partial adaptive approaches, but these are all uh, considering predefined stage times as they resolve points. However, like finding that best stage time is not considered within the decision making process. And then another line of research, which is relevant to us also, is related with this decision dependent optimization under uncertainty. And in this case, our decisions can impact the time of information discovery, which is the case like in these papers. Um, however, in generally, like these also focus on how to solve these type of problems, but like structural properties regarding the time of information discovery over some problem structures are not studied. So what is the meaning of that revision time in terms of uh, like how it affects and how it is compared to the different stochastic programming efforts are not studied in the literature. Um, and before I proceed, these are like some preliminary notations. Uh, so in fact, I would not be going that much detail, but just to uh, show you. So this, so like I will be using letter N for representing nodes in scenario tree. This AN is like kind of this, this is this one's ancestor nodes, like the one in the previous time period. Uh, this path N is in fact like kind of the path from that root node, like that starting node from the uh, node N. Um, and we have this SC, which is like the set of nodes in that specific uh, time period T. So by remembering like some of these notations, let me show you a simple uh, stochastic dot sizing problem. Uh, so we have just single resource, this X, and our goal is to determine its production amounts in the setting. So we are minimizing the cost in here like in the objective, and we can think of this delta as a, some demand parameter. So the goal is to satisfy our demand over the planning horizon, but this demand is uncertain. So this is where our uncertainty comes from. And, and in this formulation, this is a multi-stage formulation now. So, so your decisions X can be different in each node. But now let us consider it's uh, this version, like in which we have one revision for the single resource sub problem. And let us see how the objective function value changes. 
So in here, we compare three different approaches. So this black one is the two stage, meaning that you commit your all production schedule uh, at the beginning of the planning. Since it is least flexible, it results in the highest cost. And if we think about the red line, it is the multi-stage cost. So it, is, it has the full flexibility. Uh, so we can observe that its cost is the least. However, as we mentioned that in some problem settings, you don't have that uh, full flexibility. So which is why we, we consider revising our decision once. And we can observe that the value of the objective function changes significantly depending on when we revise. So say if we revise that period like four, it's in fact really close to the uh, multi-stage case. But if we say revise at the last period, then in fact it's closer to two stage. So from this simple example, we can observe that our objective is significantly affected by our choice of revision point. So by uh, seeing this like motivation, this uh, so like in this study, our roadmap is to first develop a stochastic programming formulation in which the revision points are decision variables. And then we demonstrate the value of this proposed approach compared to two-stage and multi-stage stochastic programming methods on a specific problem structure, which will be capacity expansion planning for our case. And then we will be developing an algorithm with approximation guarantee uh, to solve these problems under the specific problem structure. And at the end, we will be demonstrating the benefits of this approach on a computational study. So now let me start with the uh, stochastic formulation. So in here, we think about two types of variables. So we have the primary decisions extent, such as capacity acquisition decisions in this capacity expansion planning problem. And our YN decisions is kind of the secondary ones, which are dependent on our XN values. And in this problem settings, like our, uh, we are like kind of think about minimizing cost. And uh, so this, uh, like the, this constraint is coupling our X and Y variables. So our X variables are the primary ones. So it carries information from the previous uh, stages. And this Y and our local variables to that specific node. And they are, as I said, linearly coupled and this X and Y can come from, from polyhedrons. So this is a multi-stage formulation. So we don't have any restrictions on this X and and Y and values. But so like if we, decide to make it a two-stage formulation, then what we will do, what we will do is, to, uh, is, is to have this constraints like Xm is equal to Xn so that like we combine all the nodes in the same uh, stages. But still, so like I would like to note that, uh, still like in two-stage case, we consider this Yn values as changeable in each node. So, so in fact, our two-stage is still having some kind of flexibility inside so that these y and values can be our kind of recourse actions so, uh, so that like they can change in each node. And if we think about the case, which is the one that we propose, then we consider one revision for each primary variable uh, and their like revision time can be different. And now to do that, we introduce a decision variable T star in here. And uh, for the variables which are before that T star value, then uh, we have this kind of uh, constraint, which is similar to that two-stage setting. But for the variab variables x, which are, uh, which are like kind of after that, it's revision time, we now have a different formulation to capture that, uh, like capture that uh, realization of uncertainty in our problem settings. But the uh, problem is that in here, constraints depends on a decision variable, t star, so it results in a nonlinear formulation. And to do like to uh, to find the uh, uh, linear formulation, we can linearize these last two constraints by defining binary variables corresponding to these revision decisions. So then we can obtain a mixed integer linear programming reformulation. However, we would like to uh, first uh, show that this this in fact this problem is really hard to solve. So this problem is MP hard. So this is the first thing that we prove. And in fact, the proof shows that like the complexity comes from the choice of the revision time. So like for like even for simple, uh, like polynomial solvable problems. So like if you have a revision time as your decision variable, then it can become a hard problem to solve. And also we mentioned that we need to add some additional binary variables and constraints, which make this problem hard to solve. 
And it becomes also computationally challenging in addition to being theoretically challenging to directly solve this formulation as number of time periods and number of nodes increase. So here is like for a simple problem, like for stochastic lot sizing problem, we can see how like runtime increases from three to 10 stages um, in here. So because of these complexities, we would like to analyze the theoretical and empirical performances of this adaptive two-stage approach on a specific problem class which covers lot sizing problems and also capacity expansion planning problem. And to do that, uh, so like we will be defining a, like a new kind of term, like the value of this approach. So for, for like any vector T star, so now this T star is a given vector to us representing the revision time corresponding to each resource, like each decision variable, we have the following relationship. So this, uh, VMS, like this is the, since we are thinking about the minimization problem and this uh, multi-stage gives the most flexible one, its cost is the least and two-stage cost is the most. However, for like any revision vector T star in between, we can observe that its cost should be somewhere like between multi-stage and two-stage in here. And our goal is to derive bounds between this adaptive two-stage and multi-stage and also between this two-stage and adaptive two-stage for a given T star vector. And we will be referring to the bond between this two-stage and adaptive two-stage as value of this adaptive two-stage approach. Uh, so later in the talking uh, talk, uh, so like I will be also showing the bonds for this, like the multi-stage and adaptive two-stage, like between these two. But in fact, I would like to note that like this multi-stage does not give a feasible solution for the adaptive two-stage one because it gives like a really flexible solution. However, like two-stage gives it, in fact, a feasible solution for the adaptive two-stage. So in fact, we use multi-stage just for uh, like showing later that, so like although we have single revision time, we can obtain a solutions which are like uh, really similar to multi-stage setting. And let me move on to capacity expansion planning problem. So we have this Xn and Yn decision variables. So this is like the primary one, capacity acquisition, and these are the capacity allocation decisions at specific nodes. And, and this, uh, the first constraint is for like having production amounts restricted by how much capacity you have. And the second one is for our demand constraints and we are minimizing our costs. So we can decompose this problem in the following form where we have now our yn variables in the first like in the first stage and in the second stage once these y decisions are given in fact we can further decompose the second stage problem with respect to each resource i um, and this is like our kind of uh, sub problems in here so now this part is like given to us in, the, in here and we can think of this as our demand so you can rem remember that like this part is in fact the stochastic lot sizing problem uh, and we will be using, we will be first making our like analysis on this lot sizing, like this single stage, uh, single resource sub problem to get some, uh, obtain some results. And one other important note is that the constraint matrix is uh, TU for this sub problem and which we will be benefiting it in our analysis. Uh, so let this, these values like this VIM, VIR, TI star and VIT be the LP relaxation values of this multi-stage adaptive two stage under this given revision time T star, TI star and this VIT. Then uh, for the multi-stage case in fact, this lot sizing problem has been studied earlier and uh, for that single resource problem, uh, there is some uh, bounce on the on lower and upper bounds values. But now we studied it for the specific setting where we have uh, 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 we have this limited flexibility setting under this revision times T star. And for that one, we can obtain lower and upper ones, which are functions of revision time, our cost data and our demand data. And since in our setting, if we just take the revision times as the first stage, and by using this formulation, in fact, it reduces to the, this one, which is like a simpler one over here. And from there, from using these three bounds, in fact, we can derive a lower bound on our gain against two stage. So in here, this is like difference between two stage objective and the one that we propose under this TI star. So we can obtain a lower bound on our gain. And also we can obtain, uh, we can obtain an upper bound on our loss against multi-stage by comparing these objective function values in here. 
So by using this uh, like subproblem structure, we can obtain some theoretical bounds for the performance of, uh, for the performance performance of the uh, 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 for the step approach as a function of this revision point T i star. And let me show you some uh, this. So in fact, my time is like going. Uh, so let me maybe pass this part a bit faster. But the goal is that, so like if we assume some specific forms, say like if we have some cost stationarity and so on, then our bounds in fact reduces to much simpler expressions. And like once we decide to maximize this gain of uh, gain in comparison to two stage and minimize its loss against multi-stage, then in fact it results in like maximizing say this first expression and minimizing the second one. So in fact it, find, it means like finding ti star that, that minimizes this expression. And we can observe that, for instance, this minimizer should be somewhere between like this second time period to the first time period, we see the maximum demand in our scenario tree. So this is a kind of uh, uh, practical implications on specific problem structures. But we mentioned that these results are for the single resource sub problem. So the goal is to extend it to the capacity expansion planning setting. And for that one, we propose like these following bounds. So these are now for the bounds on the full capacity expansion planning problem as a lower bound on our gain and then kind of an upper bound on our loss against a uh, multi-stage. And our next step is to derive some solution algorithms um, by using this analysis. And for this purpose, so like I will be uh, simply and fastly showing you three different algorithms. So the first one is like what we have is two-stage relaxation. So the main takeaway from this, this one is that we find the revision time that maximizes the lower bound on our gain. And in the second one, in the multi-stage relaxation, what we call, we find the revision time that minimizes the loss, in fact, uh, between this uh, in comparison to multi-stage case. And for the third one, uh, we start by solving the relaxation of the full model to obtain our revision times. And then we find our decisions X and Y under that revision time values. And um, for this specific uh, solution algorithm, we can obtain, in fact, a, a guarantee on its performance such that like the difference between the true problem and the one that we get from this solution algorithm is bounded by a constant value. So this is in fact like a cost parameter in our scenario T like for the first node, the cost parameter. And this is like some of it over resources. So this is like, we find the constant approximation guarantee for the specific algorithm. And also we can further note that as like number of stage goes to like infinity, we can observe some form of like a convergence to the true problem. And let me show you fastly our, uh, some computational results. And to do that, we focus on generation expansion planning problem by considering six type of generation resources planning over like a planning horizon from three to 10 periods. Uh, and the types that we consider are like kind of nuclear coal and two types of natural gas, wind and solar. And in here, the uncertainty comes from the demand levels and to test this approach we tested over two and scenario trees with two and three branches. Um, so uh, in the in this first slide, so like I will be showing you this relative gain of this approach co comparing to two stage case. So best um, uh, if I may uh, interrupt quickly. So here uh, you this is like a sample average approximation uh, kind of uh, setup where you you pre-sample the the scenarios or. Uh, the, 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 the random uh, variables? So in fact, like at the beginning of planning, so we have like given scenario trees. So we consider this as like something given to us. So like it's kind of representing our underlying yeah. uncertainty, but it's in fact like kind of an approximation of the underlying uncertainty. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, what we have in here is uh, like comparing the the, uh, re the relative gain of this approach in comparison to two stage. So these are like kind of the percentage gains. And this high, medium, low represents the variance level in the scenario trees. So for instance, like in high, we can see that like we have more variance in demand over time, like over different time periods. And in low, we have less variance. And we can observe that as variance increases, in fact, our, our relative gain is also getting uh, higher. 
so this shows us that like the we, we can see higher gains with larger variability in demand. And uh, we can also observe like we have like up to 21% gain, for instance, in these instances. And most gain is observed for the problems with five stages for the setting, because like as you have like more stages in fact, and since you have a single revision time, it uh, turns out to be more like a static policy. So which is why, so like as number of stages increases, this approach loses its power because, because of the limited flexibility of the underlying problem's nature. And uh, let me quickly also show you the results of uh, different solution algorithms. So these three, like TS-Relax, MS-Relax, and ATS-Relax are the three solution algorithms that we were uh, discussing. And this, in, in fact, this gain column shows the relative gain against two-stage approach, and this loss shows the relative loss against multi-stage, but note that like multi-stage gives, does not give in fact a feasible solution for the setting, but we are comparing it to see like how, uh, how, how good a solution we can have. And from this case, in fact, we can observe that like these gain amounts are really similar to multi-stage. So we can see that it's uh, powerful with a single revision time, like under this limited flexible setting. And from these three different approaches, this ATS relax has the most gain and least loss compared to the other two. And one other observation is that this, this uh, last two approaches, like MS relax and ATS relax, provide optimality gap uh, by presenting like lower bonds through solving relaxations. And as we construct feasible solutions, it, uh, we find also like upper bonds. And using these two bonds, we can report the optimality gap for these two cases. And since we also show the convergence of ATS relax, we can also see like this gap reduces as number of time, like as number of stages increases. So in fact, we can see also this convergence in our computational study as well for the ATS relax case. Um, however, like despite of this computational, like good parts of ATS relax, in fact, it's computationally more expensive compared to MS relax and ATS relax. So these are like showing how, run, how, how runtime like changes in uh, different uh, solution algorithms in this case. Um, and this is like some giving some practical implications on capacity expansion planning. Say like, uh, since like we are considering on generation expansion planning setting, uh, and comparing it with the static case where we commit like these actions ahead of planning. Then we can observe like in this like one specific instance, like if we just examine that we have like 16% gain in the specific setting. And in general, in fact, in static policies, it brings forward the expansion times to satisfy demand because it does not have the like much recourse actions. But in our case, we have uh, we have the uh, we can see that like the traditional generation types uh, have their like kind of purchase amounts which are like kind of earlier in the planning, but for the renewable resources it, it occurs later in the time periods. But these like these revision times based are based on the cost structures and also depending on the uncertainty in demand over the planning horizon. So we can see this also like in the change in the policy. Uh, so let me give you a summary of like what. Uh, we have covered in these slides. So in fact, we start by proposing a stochastic programming approach in which the revision points are decision variables for each like uh, resource. And we prove that this problem is MP hard. Then we developed a mixed integer linear programming reformulation of this problem and uh, provided an analytical analysis for the capacity expansion planning problem. And then we demonstrate the value of this approach by driving bounds compared to the like two-stage and multi-stage stochastic programming settings. And lastly, we propose like three different specific solution algorithms for this problem and one with also some constant approximation guarantee. And uh, finally, we provide some computational study to show like how these solution, uh, solution algorithms perform and also like to gain off this approach against uh, having like a full static policy. Uh, so like, I hope I don't uh, take too much time. Thank you so much for your time listening. So like, if you have any questions, please ask. And also like, if you can find the full version of the paper, which will be also uh, revised uh, in the coming months with the newer version. Thank, Thank you again. You. Thanks, Beste, uh, for a very nice talk. Uh, okay, in terms of questions, uh, please raise your hand uh, and then we'll unmute you. So let's we'll start with uh, Sriram here. Uh, 
Go ahead, uh, Shirkan, you're unmuted. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, nice talk, Beste. Um, I have a question. So uh, you generally assume uh, in your computational experiments, your uh, potential values of T star was from two to 10, I guess, right? Yes, in fact, like the values can be like from one to 10. One, one to 10. So uh, why can't we do the following? So you uh, loop through each of the 10 possible values of T star and then solve each of those individual problems as a two-stage stochastic program. Is that going to be much more time consuming than this algorithm that you propose? Uh, no, in fact. So like if you have like single revision time for like all decisions, say like you have like thousands of variables, but if like all thousands of variables have like revision point at time like one, two, three, or to 10, then you pick like just solving that 10 different uh, problems and then you will be done. But like since in this case, like we can have different revision times for like all of those 10,000 variables in fact, like, I see. Uh, you have like many different combinations to take into account. So which is why like it take, uh, so like it becomes hard to uh, kind of enumerate each possibility and to okay, solve. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I misunderstood. I, I, uh, I, I, I misunderstood that, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, any other, uh, I, have, I have a question, but if there are any other from uh, our attendees, please raise your hand. Uh, okay, in the meantime, maybe I'll ask, uh, in terms of uh, scalability, um, what do you see as the, as the kind of the next logical step? What is it that um, methodologically you would like to study um, so as to try to push the scalability further? Um, so one thing is that like currently, uh, so this becomes like really hard to solve with the current setting. So which is why like we need some kind of heuristics or, uh, to solve it. Um, but so like if we can push it further, then we can try with cases with like multiple revision times. So it will be like a harder problem to solve, but it can be tried. And also another thing is to try to solve this problem as a kind of an approximate way. So there can be some decision rules which can be applied or some constraints might be identified to be reduced from the problem set because we have in fact many non anticipability constraints in the formulation. So for the true problem and also for the generic setting, uh, like one might also think about removing those uh, variables in a much cleverer way. But since we focus on capacity expansion problem setting, like this, these results were like good in terms of the, like specific for that specific problem structure. But I think especially for generic problem settings, then like there, there is like room, uh, many rooms for improvement in terms of scalability. Sure, okay, thanks. And then uh, Jim, you're unmuted, please go ahead. Uh, hi, best of very interesting talk. Thanks for sharing. Um, I was just wondering, it looked like in your results that when, when you were comparing the, the gap of the adaptive solutions to the multi-stage, sort of the loss, that that gap also seemed to decrease as the number of time periods grew. Was, did I see that right? So this one um, you mean? And the, yeah, the percent loss of, yeah, the loss, you know, that seemed to get smaller for the larger number of time stages as well. Yes, yes. Do you have any, any intuition for that? Uh, so I think it's also kind of counterintuitive because I think also for like even for multi-stage the gain also reduces as number of stages goes. So maybe for like uh, for like this specific setting, so I think demand increases over time, but uh, for like some uh, for some reason in fact like it seems to reduce after some number of stages, like after maybe like nine ten in this case. Uh, but in fact, I see. I Mm -hmm. It makes more sense. I, I didn't pay attention to the multi-stage column itself. So it makes sense that the, if that's go reducing, then, then the loss should also go down with that. Okay, thanks. Okay. It's related with the kind of the related data set that I was studying about, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, with that, we'll wrap up. Uh, thanks again, Beste. And then uh, Alex uh, will now introduce uh, Margarita for our second talk. Yes. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Best. That was great. And I'm going to stop that recording.